Hey everybody, International Master Danny Wrench back again here today. Best day of your life? I don't know. Why don't you wait and see, okay, and stop trying to predict the future all the time. All I know is we're here to see some must-see games from the Zurich Chess Challenge, hashtag Zurich Chess on Twitter. You can read all of our news reports by Peter Dockers over at chess.com, and let's jump into the most exciting game of the tournament so far, similar to my other video on Vichy Anon versus Levon Aronian, a win, a win that was due in large part uh, to preparation, but it doesn't change the fact that it was exciting and full of fireworks for all of us, and I will be completely honest that I, I had absolutely zero clue of what was going on in this game. I don't play this opening, and I didn't know what was going on, so to me, I was literally tweeting at people like, can... Can somebody explain to me why the F2 pawn is hanging in this position? And, and I think a lot of you are going to feel the same way. So get excited. This is going to be fun. So we have we have an English, a symmetrical English, a four knights English to be exact. And, and with D4 takes takes, we're getting in to some surprisingly sharp positions. I think the English holds a reputation of maybe being boring or positional, uh, a la Queen's Gambit type of structures. And of course, that's possible. But... Anytime you get you push this pawn early and and we we're gonna get fireworks here in the center as as the position opens up and the the lines here that occur with this bishop taking an early and often development on this diagonal are often tactical in nature and 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 tricky and of course black has potentially weak dark source to go along with it just to talk about some of the basic strategical stuff going on in this position and and this game was was no exception the the tactics happened early white plays g three and from a strategical perspective, black black does need to put pressure on the center early in these positions because if you give white three or four just free moves, like black plays moves like a6 uh, to, to, to guard the b5 square from, from one of the ponies or both, and then bishop e7 and castles. Let's say black doesn't do anything. You're going to get bishop to g2 for white, castles for white, and then e4, which if you're keeping track at home is a Maroxy bind and a position where white's going to enjoy a comfortable edge with a big space advantage. And I'll just go ahead and make those moves and instead of asking everybody to visualize the, the, the position I'm seeing in my head, just to give you a basic idea that this is not an ideal uh, bind for black. Of course, the Maroxy bind is playable for black in, in, in different openings from the accelerated dragon to some positions out of the hedgehog. But here the bishop is really ideally placed on this diagonal to make life difficult for black, pushing either one of these pawns. Uh, and white is in, enjoying a comfortable space advantage. It's just, it's not the ideal Maroxy bind. So I, I like to foreshadow why did we get what we got in, in a particular game between two super GMs uh, so that we're not just going through the moves and trusting that this is just how chess is played. I think a lot of people feel sort of overwhelmed and like, I don't know what's going on. And now all of a sudden there's craziness and... But that's the basic strategical fight that's going on here is, is black needs to look to do something early to white before development is complete and before white gets that big grip on the center here, which is the reason why you see the, the variations uh, that occurred in the game. And it's the reason why you see the theory developed the way that it has in this line. So, so black plays queen to b6 to do just that, putting pressure on the knight and uh, potentially going to develop this bishop. And so the dark square battle has begun. It has begun, as Shao Kahn said. Hashtag Mortal Kombat, duh. All right, um, knight D to B5, and here comes knight E5. This move is played with dual purposes. The knight attacks the C4 pawn and opens up the queen to guard D6. You're welcome. That's why the move was played. Now you understand. Bishop F4 is played with uh, the purpose to put exactly the kind of pressure that black doesn't want to see on both C7 and D6 and on the knight. Knight, e, knight to g4 is played with two purposes, to protect the knight on e5 and to attack f2. All of this looks fine and dandy, and you're thinking, okay, well, we're just going to see some simple move like uh, e3. This is the move that was played in in uh, the games before this, after e3, a6. Actually, no, e3 and a6 was played in today's game, so I should correct myself. Uh, queen a4 was played in the uh, previous games. No, actually, I think I'm... I think I'm getting wrong. That's right. Yeah, I am getting wrong. Yeah, E3 is 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 the move that had been played previously to today's game. And after A6 and then Queen A4, you don't see the positions that we got in the game with F2 hanging. Uh, but this is kind of a funny line, so we'll look at it anyway. After H3 and G5, everybody's hanging in this position. Uh, base, the forcing line simply makes sense for both sides. And this position is one where white has... Rook and a couple pawns for the minor pieces, it's uh, evaluated as absolutely crazy. 
In a practical sense, I usually prefer the minor pieces, but here with White having so many pawns, probably dynamically it's equal, and this was the game between Matlakov and Grishuk from Dubai 2014, so the last time that players of the top 10 nature, being uh, Grishuk as black, played this line. But Nakamura did not uh, play e3. Sorry, I was analyzing the game for a little while before we did the video here, so I forgot which line was actually played by him in the game for a second, having added some different variations and looking at it. But, but the move played in the game, which, and again, was the move that made me go, say what, was queen a4. And, and not knowing anything about the theory of this line, I've learned that now. I'm sure everyone looks at this position and is like, what is going on here? Queen takes f2. Isn't that like checkmate? And then, you know, bug house drops a pawn on e3 and a bishop on e4 and Bob's your uncle, right? But uh, no, that's not the case here. Bob is not your uncle, at, you know, at least not my uncle. It's it's just totally messy because the position is such where black can go all in and take f2, which looks really good. Queen takes f2, king to d2. And then the simple question is, but then what? Uh, white still has all the threats of knight to c7. Th these knights are still potentially overloaded in a lot of positions where a simple move like h3 attacking the knight who's, a, who's defending this bishop will, will start to overwhelm the pony. So it's not so simple. And uh, yeah, it's just a total mess. And the game G5 is played, which is kind of the typical tactical little nuance Black has to put the question to the bishop. The question is, do you move somewhere random and take away threats like H3 because now my knights are no longer bound to protecting each other? Or do you trade on E5? Uh, the most common thing played here, bishop is just going to take on E5. And, and if, if the knight had just taken back on E5, the main point is the white castle's long and... Okay, there's been some games here. Let's go through it. I think the last big game was, yeah, was uh, Aronian versus Peter Laco, uh, as far as players that are names you would know today. Um, A6, E3, again, we're, we're just taking advantage of the pin here and opening up the bishop, rook to B8, knight to F4. A few more moves are made, and we get a position where black is basically stuck with his king in the center, which means that Probably I feel like white's a little bit better here in a practical sense. Uh, Well-coordinated pieces and not really a weakness in, in his camp to, to talk about. But black does have the bishop pair. And, and with the bishop pair comes dynamic potential. You might, in a lot of positions, see the bishop and queen be on the dark squares. This king might take a slow walk to g7. And, and maybe black's king is, is safer on, on uh, the king's side than we first thought. So it's unclear. It's a mess. Again, this was a Roni and Laco from Lenari's 2008. You can take a look at it. Personally, I think that white probably holds a little bit of an edge here, but uh, that would be the last time the game was, was played, th this line was played. But here, we didn't see that. After bishop takes e5, we saw Ronian go ahead and capture on f2, probably because he was expecting the, the game to head down lines with knight c7, king d8, takes a8, queen d4 check, and after king c2, knight takes c4, the, the uh, only real time this game had been played up till now was with king to b3, knight d2 check. And the game was simply repeated, king to c2, knight to c4, uh, Carlson versus Dominguez Perez. In case you guys know who Magnus Carlson is, obviously pretty good. And if you're playing the position as black, knowing that black achieved kind of an easy draw against Magnus Carlson with this repeating of moves, maybe that made a Ron, uh, sorry, a Karyakin feel like this was this was likely the uh, the line that Hikaru was headed toward, but not so fast, right? Instead, Hikaru has a different move prepared. That move is e4. There's an obvious threat. Bishop takes c4, and that obvious threat, combined with sort of forgetting the preparation in this line, is, is what Karyakin actually tweeted after the game, led him to make an immediate blunder now. Uh, I took a look at the move that is supposed to be the move besides what he did according to everyone, which is queen to d2 check, and a line that Hikaru actually had fun talking about with the commentators after the game, just to, to show Hikaru did have fun with this line and, and talking to them, showing his, his preparation after the big win. And he said that the, the real trick of the line is queen d2, king b3, queen takes b2, king takes b4. It's just fun, right? Total mess. Bishop to g7, the subtle bishop to g7. And after queen a5, b6, queen takes g5, you're not taking on c3, okay? Uh, you're playing f6, and queen takes g7 would be met by bishop to a6, and then queen to d2, which is mate. So the queen comes back to b5. And now the amazing bishop a6, again, another sacrifice to lure the queen away, followed by f5. 
And look at this position. The point is, White has no way to guard the C3 knight. <coughs> Which, if you're not careful, is queen takes C3 check, king to B5, followed by queen to C6 checkmate. Oh, not checkmate, the king go to B4, but uh, likely, likely a repeat of moves at the very least exists there for black. Hikaru, without going further into the line, which I'm sure he did at home, said that this line is is just zeros, which is the uh, the term used to describe a computer draw, right? Zero point zero zero is uh, the way the way the way the cool kids talk about a forced draw these days. So he says this line is zeros. I believe him, but certainly if you don't remember some of the subtleties of of White's awkwardness of guarding this this knight on c3 and 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 how. You can trust that even down two pieces and a rook here, that's a lot of material. I'll say that again because I don't think it's sunk in. I could see you just like zoning out right now at home. Two pieces and a rook. Uh, white is still in, in a really tricky position. And again, probably it's just a draw at best. I'm not going to go deeper in the line because my computers aren't as strong as theirs anyway. I don't have Komodo Dragon 79.26 and I don't have Ply 30, all right? What I have is Fritz 3. Because I still beat Fritz 3, and, and that makes me feel good inside. And isn't that what it's all about? All right. Um, so that that's the line that Hikaru gave as far as the theoretically best approach for black after e4. Karyakin claims to have forgotten that and was prepared for the same thing. I would have forgotten it too. Or is it really the truth? I don't know. But I know that that would have been really fun to see, just like the game was. But after 93 check, uh, uh, as was played... And and uh, let me uh, go ahead and find the line for 93 check. The truth is, after king to b3, white is already just completely winning. Uh, as the commentators pointed out, and as I had I had no idea about, but I now having looked at the game, I do believe them. Queen to b6 check doesn't work, by the way, because the knight can take it, in case anyone looks at that as like some weird tactics trainer checkmate. No bueno. So now queen to d2 is played, but of course it has no concrete threats, and, and white starts to be directly aggressive here, plays a3 first to free up some space for the king. But with the queens coming off the board, no hope for uh, gathering enough material to have compensation. Even without the direct threats of, of getting f7 and, and what happened in the game, you know, white's up the exchange here and, and with plenty of time to coordinate it and be better. Finds the nice combination with knight takes d7, which wins a piece, even though it doesn't seem to with the with the bishop taking it, but the point is after check, there's just not going to be enough to deal with that bishop there. So rook to c3 uh, after rook to a, same thing. Main point is that if rook takes everyone, rook c3, rook d6, e5, and uh, and black can resign. So a really a really amazing game, and especially for me, I'll admit that I was I had a really fun time watching it because I didn't know any of the theory. So I'm looking at a position like I said, with you know a queen taking on f2 and a king walking to c4, and I'm thinking you know say what right come again. But uh, fun to see how the modern day assistance of computer engines combined with just the skill and intuition of players at that level can lead to really exciting chess like this. I love it when uh, old classical is are wrong chess is not dead chess is far from dead and when you have computers that are so strong and 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 seeing things that humans aren't combined with the humans intuition that no let's keep looking at this and feeding it with the right moves you see games like the anon game with Aronian, where you look back at an old variation that was sort of dismissed and you come up with something new and you look at a game like this where uh the comp without a computer's assistance would anybody really feel confident to to walk their king to c4 and know that okay if we get this, Karyakin has to find the best moves, and in best case scenario, it's a draw. I would take that risk too, right? Because it just, is he going to find all the best moves? So, makes for some really exciting chess, some awesome fireworks happening on the board at the uh, Zurich Chess Challenge right now. Hopefully, I will have some time to do some more videos if we have more must-see games in this new series we're doing here for YouTube. But again, you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow Peter Docker's reports on chess.com, and you can... See more of the action. Let's go ahead and, and back up again to what actually happened in the game with uh, 93 check and blunder and go a little sports center style and remind ourselves that an exchange is too much here and Hikaru finishes off finishes off Karyakin very neatly and uh, the game is over. So congratulations to Hikaru, who, by the way, crosses 2,800 for the first time ever. Golf clap for everyone who is a Hikaru Nakamura fan or a fan of chess. Of course, we love his chess.com wristband. He looks so sexy wearing that thing, right? Doesn't he? Come on, don't. It does not awkward. It's not awkward if you admit that another man looks good. That doesn't say anything about you. It says you're comfortable with yourself. 
All right? All right, everybody. Have fun, and uh, see you on chess.com.